Okay. So, hi, Karina. I'm glad you joined me today. Um, we met through David Bingham. <laughs> this is our yes. friend, our common friend. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he's done a, a lot of um, clarifying, clarifying for us to to rest in happiness of being. Yes, yes. And so I thought I, I reached out to you to have a conversation and um, what we felt came forth was the mm -hmm. releasing of low vibration energy and how we deal with the emotional body. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, I'll say it as simple as that. When you realize you're not your thought, there's kind of a, an opening, oh, and, and, and these thoughts, they may be adopted still, even after you realize you're not your thought, and then the emotional body will feel the contraction, and then there's no way to put our head in the sand, our head in the sand <laughs> and ignore it. It's quite obvious that it's there, and, 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 and is it normal? How long does it continue? All of these questions are... Yeah. I feel uh, important for anyone that is on this non-journey journey. journey. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's interesting because since our last conversation where we kind of talked about this, um, I went back and rewatched one of David Bingham's conscious TV episodes. And when he's talking about, you know, declining the invitation and I just completely saw it at another level because you know when we were talking I was telling you how I had allowed the mind I started believing the mind story again that oh you must not have actually seen your true nature because if you had you wouldn't be feeling the way you feel or acting or reacting the way you act or anything and I was just believing the mind story again but um, it goes back to what David talks about about like you're going to get invitations through your emotional body and through the mind body um, and you, you can choose to accept them and get back on the ride, or you can choose to decline them. And I it just never really, I didn't understand it at that same level as I understood it when I watched it the other day wow. after we talked. <laughs> it's wonderful. And that invitation is so common. That's like, it's so common. If if you had self-realized, if you had, a, if you were awakened, you wouldn't feel this you all oh, that one is really like it's one of the biggest one to uh bring us back into the illusion that something's wrong that maybe other people have got it and i have <laughs> not gotten it and then yeah. and then as, as this dissolved more and more you realize oh there's nothing to get <laughs> that's the beautiful uh the beautiful revelation is that there's yeah. nothing, nothing to get and to change and yeah. And I think for me, I know that before before I had read The Greatest Secret and spoke of David Bingham and had my first, you know, when I saw my true nature, I hadn't heard of non-duality before. I hadn't, you know, seen any non-duality videos or anything. I hadn't even heard the word. Me neither. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had never been attracted to like Eastern religions or philosophies or theologies or anything. So um, that was pretty foreign to me and after this I started getting curious what other people were saying you know so I started watching some of the videos out there and that also made my mind come in and question oh but some it doesn't sometimes even though you can see what's playing out across the screen again it's like Oh, if I, I truly believed there was nothing, if I truly knew there was nothing, again, why am I getting angry at this person? Why am I feeling these emotions? Why am I, I told you, like, I went into a depression for a little bit. Why am I depressed? You know, that's all part of the emotional body and physical body and everything. And it's like, well, it's almost like I believed I should have transcended that. I should be like uh -huh. one of those people who's like, oh, there's no one, there's nothing. And I didn't feel like that, you know? Yes. So, um. So there was, it was, you know, this happened when I first spoke with David Bingham, it was in late 2021, August of 2021, and it's 2023 now. And over the last year and a half, it was like constantly talking to my friends who have had the same um, realization 
like David Farmer and um, and some other and other people. And then I have another um, person who I who's on Facebook. His name is G.P. Walsh, who I really love his work. Um, and I'd always question and it would like, you know, they would just point me back to the same place. I'm like, oh, yeah, but I oh, yeah, yeah, it's so clear. <laughs> I know that. And so it's like there was this there was this yeah. dance where it was like, okay, I know this. And then, oh, but wait, my mind was coming in and going, oh, but wait, but wait, but wait. So yeah, I think having more conversations about like what happens after seeing your true nature. And for some people, I do think it is kind of like once it's there, it's there. But for myself, and it might have to do with like my background, the story of Karina before that. But for myself, it wasn't, Yeah. it, the, it was very much like, going back accepting the ride back into the human story many many times before I was finally like okay this is it I, I'm i solid in my knowing yes this is it. yes <laughs> there is a it feels like there's a turning point at some where at some point where you're like yeah okay now it's complete like there's a completion of I've gone through these all these invitations like the this huge fear or, and and all these but it, it's not, I say huge fear, it depends. Some people will have less and more of something else. And it was quite the same for me. I spoke with David on April 1st, 2021. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the end of foolishness. And I went through a solid year of really like intense stuff. And then it was more subtle, but it was still... Uh, I feel it's not clear. So I, I went more into inquiry. What would it say if it had words and just sat with it? And it felt like as there is, it's kind of, there's a block. It felt in the body, there's a release. And then the block and a release. And at some point, there's just release. Without doing yeah. anything. It's effortless. It's just, and then this feeling of, a uh, quiet joy mm -hmm. yeah. is more, I'd say, constant, but it's already there. It's just that it's covered by these blocks of energy that adopting a thought will make us feel. And when I feel when we see I'm not my thought, there is no turning point. Like these energy, they're there. So they're they have to be dealt with or met or yeah. and denying them or uh, making other beliefs around them will not help. Yeah. 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 Um, I know that our stories are a little different because for me, um, I was very much in spirituality and seeking and new age spirituality manifestation, all of that really heavily. And I was, you know, I, I was teaching it. I still teach some of it. So um, I feel like here it was also like, you know, I was like, I was so used to doing certain things and reacting certain things, certain ways. So it's like, I had taught myself that when, you know, when something quote unquote seemingly bad happens that it's like okay gotta go like force myself to think positive force myself to yes. like raise my emotional vibration um force myself to do healing techniques like eft tapping and stuff and so i feel like i was still living that out as well like i was just automatically going into those things even though i knew and like you said it's just kind of like it was a process that eventually I got to a point where I could just, um, yeah, sit back and just be aware of them ar arising and just let them dissolve. Just, you know, it's like, it's like a cloud that appears in the sky and then it fades away in the sky. I could let it be more like that instead of going in and, and thinking I had to do something about it. So even after self-realization, I was still doing yes. all these things about this, you know, mm -hmm. these, these, these things that were happening in reality that I didn't like or that yes. feelings that I didn't like. Yeah. Yes. I can understand. It's kind of an habitual way of being mm -hmm. things we've learned that were really useful at the time oh. we learned them that are now just, 
not useful anymore. It's kind of letting them go as well and trust, trusting, trusting that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the reasons I really like this person, GP Walsh's work is because um, he, I think he saw his true nature like 40 years ago or something like that. And he's been talking about it, holding satsangs and stuff um, and having students from a very long time. And recently, I don't know how recently, but, you know, more recently, he started doing two things where he would speak about our true nature, teach about our true nature. But then also he would help people give them tools um, how to help, you know, release the emotions, release the thoughts. So that way, um, you know, they could they could get to a point where they weren't so struck in the stuck in the drama where then they could have that ability to and that freedom to sit back and really explore who and what they truly are. Because once you see who and what you truly are, you don't really need you. I mean, for me, I still use the tools, but essentially you don't really need the tools anymore. Um, and that's what I really appreciate that because I felt the same way. It was like just hearing there's nobody there. There's nothing to do. You don't need tools. You don't need this. I don't think it's really super helpful when you're in the middle of the story, when you're in yes. the middle of all the drama. Yes. So, um, so I, you know, it's like, it's like tools can be fine. That can be helpful if you understand that they're just tools. And then, yeah. and at the same time, you can continue searching for your true or not searching, you know, you can continue inquiring and and see, knowing yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Yeah. It felt like, um, for me, it felt like the knowing was there. And as I was doing the work of meeting the emotion, I didn't build a new identity of mm -hmm. someone who has to do all this work. Mm -hmm. So the difference was, I know the knowing is there, it's never left, but there are these emotions that are arising. And, and I, I felt through the course of these two years that there were thought that were really, I adopted them. Yeah. And I felt really low, like a thought would be, uh, um, I don't belong. People will leave the space I'm in. And then I would feel really, really sad. And I would feel that is me. This is me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I felt this energy. But I, it's kind of, I had to just love it. <laughs> and bring it so much love from the spaciousness of our true nature, from that knowing of unconditional love, which is not personal. Yeah. So that the personal me that is scared, which is the, the thought, the uh, adoption yeah. of that thought, could feel so, so safe, yeah. so loved. It's yeah. kind of, it felt like I, in my experience, I had all my life, I had kind of it eyed. I was hiding. I was having like mm -hmm. a, a job where I didn't meet many people. I wouldn't be seen publicly. And then when this expression wanted to happen through me to express, to be seen, to, to talk publicly, if I, tr if I was blocking it by fear of what would people think about me by adopting this identity, then it felt really, really awful and I felt sad. And, and I had no way of going back and hiding. Yeah. So they had to be dealt with. They had to be seen and embraced and it's okay. Uh, it's yeah. as if you lose when you lose the judgment of yourself mm -hmm. all the judgment from outside don't stick and there is no outside and inside and at some point the more as everything is dissolving the more, the more evident and obvious that is yeah. that all yeah. our suffering they have to be coming through thinking and adopting and we are yeah. the that are adopting yeah exactly yeah yeah um yeah uh, all uh I think it was John Wheeler who was in one of his interviews he said something that really helped me when you know like I said I was getting on the ride and, get, and getting off the ride and it was that um what you're saying it's like all of that all of that suffering all of the problems all of the pain comes from those those still like beliefs that may be lingering of being an individual 
of being a separate person. And it's not bad. It's just, you know, you get invited to see yourself this way. And, um, and like you said, it's like, you can approach it and rest more from the infinite being and just watch it play out without judgment because it's not good or bad. It's just something that's arising like everything else. And then that's where it dissolves the quickest, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. And it, it's like, my feeling is that at some point there is no more that I've not been seen. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> in my experience, it felt like I've gone around the whole thing, like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. What about this? Yeah. And these questions are important. They, they cannot, if they are denied and oh, it doesn't exist, just the thought. Declining and denying is not the same thing. Denying yeah. is pretending, pretending that it's not real. But if there's a feeling mm -hmm. and an emotion attached to it, it's important to look at it and to bring the light of consciousness on it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I, and that was, for this, what happened with my story is like, that was that was one of the things is like I was pushing away or denying because I was you know going into the story of like oh that's you know you shouldn't be feeling that way you shouldn't be thinking that way you should like you should be that there was this mm -hmm. ideal that I was still holding up of what it what it should have been and so I was denying and pushing away and so it became like this inner war of like knowing who I truly was and then no but you know it's like I describe it as this like inner war that was happening yeah. And that's exactly what it was. It was like, I was judging what I call the ego. I was judging what I call the ego. I was judging myself because, you know, everyone is like, I wasn't having the same experience that everyone that I had to talk to was having. Um, I felt like I shouldn't, yeah, certain, I was, shouldn't be experiencing the world the way that I was experiencing it. And it, again, one of the things that freed me up was like what you said, it's like, stop resisting and just witness just watch just look and it's all okay and so it's like once I started stop demonizing the ego and started going okay oh look there's yeah. the ego that believes I'm an individual you know like not having those yeah. thoughts that's kind of how I was approaching it all of a sudden it just became so much easier to to rest uh, you know to go to witness it all from here behind the mind behind yes. the human experience as the infinite being versus getting sucked back into the story yeah yeah because the mind does that it presents a problem then it presents a solution there are no solutions because there are no problems and then it presents yeah. a judgment over the on the top of that problem there is also that and there's also that mm -hmm. and it's like a hall of mirror that that never yeah. resolve resolve itself it's it feels also sometimes there is this seeking energy will be re really strong because once you saw your true nature you oh, oh there is this spaciousness this silence this peace and then you try to find it again so all the seeking energy is trying to seek that which is already here yeah. and that really for me it felt really like worse than before because i yeah. know there is this peace so i had to really sit with the seeking energy and say okay it's okay i see you i feel you it's okay yeah. and i always bring like there is space for you here so that the space is so big that these yeah. energy they they can't stick in this in the knot they have to dissolve in the space and there is so much space yeah that at some point it feels like calmer and calmer yeah yeah, I, so I'm just trying to, you know, recall the memories of when I first saw my true nature, there was first depression, actually, oh. <laughs> because, because, well, okay, first there was excitement, but then depression immediately came because it was like, there's no point to any of this. Everything mm -hmm. I had built my life around, everything I'd built my days around, my teaching, my work, the very thing that paid me money, it was like, there's no point in journaling. There's no point in manifestation. There's no point in like teaching this. None of it matters. It's just stories. I see clearly that it's just stories. And so there's no point. And it's like, well, then 
now what? <laughs> yes, now what? <laughs> now what? And so then that kind of led to a little bit of depression. So that was what happened there. And then um, a little bit later on, again, I got, I was got on the ride of like, oh, I didn't really see my true nature. I must not be there because it's supposed to be some sort of experience. Uh -huh. And I didn't have an experience. And so I got back on that. And then when I got shown clearly again, that like, no, this is what it is. And it's like, okay, that's what, that's when that, um, that space of just like bliss and peace opened up. And it was like, when you're just like bathed in gratitude, but there's nothing, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. It's just like, it's just the peace and the, and the bliss is just there. And this happened. Um, and this was like a little bit later from my the initial like seeing and, um, and exa it's exactly what you said. It's like that lasted for quite a while and I didn't think it would ever go away. Mm -hmm. And when it went away, I get it's exactly what you're saying. It's like, it's like, oh, I got to find that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, there was a lot of, again, that inner war happening, that inner war of like, I know this is possible, but I was looking for it. Yeah. And the trying. Mm -hmm. trying to find it is of the mind realm any yeah. effort any effort to get somewhere to, <laughs> is the leaving of it we're leaving yeah. our nature when we're traveling in these thoughts of i will get there yeah those yeah. other people are there but yeah. i am not <laughs> there all of this getting somewhere is always of the mind yes and it, it's it's kind of normal that it's all it comes up to be to be sane and to be mm -hmm. so I, I I would say if someone is, is is in that place right now is to be very very patient very open very mm -hmm. bring all the love to this energy and mm -hmm. yeah and I think that it also helps I, like I know for me it helped just to learn because again from also you know it's interesting how we can watch something and see one thing and then rewatch it and see, see completely different things. So when I first watched like David Bingham's conscious TV episode before I had spoke to him and then I watched it again after I spoke to him and then I just, it came up on my YouTube. It wasn't like I looked for it. It just came up on my YouTube feed and I was like, Oh, let's watch this again. And I saw something completely different than I had seen the other times. And um, that is that, you know, before this, I thought nobody's talking about, everybody's talking about how like, oh yeah, there, you just see through the illusion. There's nobody, there's nothing, there's nothing to do. You don't need to manifest. You don't need to do anything. Uh -huh. But David was talking about it when he talks about not getting on the ride and not accepting uh -huh. the invitations and stuff like that. And one of the things that helped me that might help other people is like, it's normal for there still to be, you know, Invit the I love David's language invitations back yes. into the yes. mind story. Um, it's normal, and even if you do get on the ride of that, even if you do take the invitation and end up playing, like it's not bad, it's not wrong, it's mm -hmm. not like it doesn't mean anything about you. No. And when you see it, when you see it, when you see it for what it is you can let that, you can let it go. And you, and it, and for me, it was like, it happened less and less and less. And, um, I, I was using, um, I was using tools like EFT tapping and the Sedona method to help me. And yeah, now I'm at a point where it's like, if anything comes up, cause things still come up for me, but I can see it and just like, let it dissolve in the moment. There's no more like let me go tap this away. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, it's like we become um, um, listening, uh, acquainted mm -hmm. with listening and um, mm -hmm. subtle, the subtle energy can be mm -hmm. listened and heard. And yeah. Yeah, it's allowed to exist as it is allowed to exist. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't stick. It's our resistance to that that makes it yeah. really hard. And um, I guess um, 
where it can become difficult, where it was difficult in, in my experience was seeing that it's possible to live with trust. Mm -hmm. To trust fully that I don't have to plan anything. I can <laughs> move towards what I love. I can I can move towards what I, brings me joy and it will appear. It, it appears as I move towards it. I don't have to plan to know why I'm doing something. Yeah. All this freedom that was clearly seen in a glimpse. What was um, making this disturbance is the lack of trust after. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna be safe. Maybe I'm gonna be judged. Maybe, and all of these. Maybe they needed. They needed a lot of attending to. Yeah. And that's where I feel it's 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 still a path, but you know that there is no path. Yeah. So you have to it to be okay with both for a while until it may it becomes clearer and clearer. That there is no path it doesn't yeah. take time to dissolve yeah. everything if we adopt the belief oh it's gonna take time it's gonna take a very long time to go through all of that because that's mm -hmm. another invitation yeah then that becomes a reality and it can last for a long time but there can be looking being with what is without adding another story on top of it that me, yes. for me, is going to take longer than for others. That's another invitation. <laughs> it is, there is no one for whom it may take longer. Although I would say I hear that some of us, and I am one of them, had more traumatic experience as a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the me contracted energy was really, really... Like I, I needed to be safe. I knew no one was in charge and no one is in charge here. And, and I was very young when I realized mm -hmm. that. So there was a lot of fear of not controlling life, of not. Yeah. So there may be for some people a little bit more to do. But even that, it's, it can be another belief because I heard someone who said they had a nice childhood, mm -hmm. joyful, safe. Mm -hmm. They felt effortless. They always yeah. felt effortless. Mm -hmm. And then they were invited in the uh, belief that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. That they should feel pain. That they should know what suffering is. So, mm -hmm. so the, inv the invitation will come. Mm -hmm. Even if everything, they may come even if everything was quite well and effortless. Yeah. And I was, yeah. I was amazed to, to listen to that conversation because... I thought, oh, wow, even in the other way, these kind of invitation, they can come as well while I'm comfortable. Yeah. Oh, if I was not, then I would suffer. Yeah. And, and that, that's another invitation because I know quite well that I was comfortable and I was suffering. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So all of these can be seen through. Yeah. And it seems that, you know, how, how it, whatever plays out, whether somebody's a lot of, you know, there, are, there's plenty of people who just see their true nature and that's it. I think that yeah. that's true too. I think yeah. however it plays out has a lot to do with the story, with our story prior to seeing our true nature. Um, e I, Even David Bingham has talked about this, where it's like the, your invitations tend to be what like when it comes to emotional invitations whatever tend to play out the most so if you were a very angry person mm -hmm. your invitations are going to be to react with anger if you were like somebody who my story was I suffered depression all my life my invitation was depression but I think that's that's going to be true with any of the stories that play out the same the stories are going to be based on whatever stories you're most used to playing out before yeah and that's what's and I think that's why um I, I think that's why a lot of people who talk about non-duality and stuff online, like the, the big, bigger teachers who have been who in their seeking journey before they saw their true nature were already immersed in this. I think that's why when they saw their true nature, they were able to drop so uh, quickly. Yeah. Whereas like, I know you're, you're, I know you told me a little bit about your story. And then there's like people who have similar stories to me. It was like, 
again, there's still this, this invitation to control and manipulate reality and do, and there's still this invitation to do because we've, because like I've been, my, my, my story and program was very much like, if I don't purposely manifest, if I don't use these healing techniques, if I don't do any of this, then it's not, it's not safe. It's dangerous. Then bad things will happen. If I don't keep myself high vibe, then bad things will happen. Oh, if I yeah. don't manifest, then, then I'm just going to be like a leaf in the wind and bad things will happen. And that was the program before. And so those were the invitations I was uh -huh. getting. Uh -huh. And so I think that became a challenge. I'm like, like you said, this is just a story. It doesn't have yeah. to be the same, but I'm just, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. it's just kind of how it played out for me. And so it was like, it took a while to see that that wasn't needed, <laughs> but it was okay yeah. that it happened. Yeah. It just wasn't yeah. needed. <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. I went, I went through a phase where it's, I think it's common for people mm -hmm. to go through that phase where nothing, something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was like, it's meaningless. And, and the mind I bought into the belief that, it's really meaningless. There's no meaning. It's boring. And it's really something mm -hmm. needs to happen. Nothing is happening. And mm -hmm. Took a while for that energy to uh, release. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So, but as they do, they the nothing becomes pure emptiness and beauty. Yeah. And <laughs> it it's not the nothing that the mind believes mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. It's more like openness to spontaneity no mm -hmm. uh, needing to know what i will say what i will do how it's going mm -hmm. to turn out <laughs> no afterthought of oh i should have said this or that it's mm -hmm. just the pure spontaneity to connect and yeah and to be. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah and it's funny because I felt the same way when this, when people say like, Oh, there's nothing. It, it, fear, it, fear, fear came up for me whenever I'd hear there's nothing, you know, there's nothing to create. There's nothing to manifest. There's no, it was fear because the mind thinks nothing is like you lose something. But the funny part, the ironic part is that <laughs> everything like, okay, if you're searching for like a spiritual place to get to, or if you're speaking for, or if you're searching for financial and monetary success or material success, if you're searching for, you know, meet your soulmate so you can be in like this bliss that you believe you're going to be if you find your soulmate, whatever people are searching for. The funny thing is, is like that, it's like the, the nothing to do is not nothing to do because there's nothing it's nothing to do because it's all there yes <laughs> <laughs> because all of that that you think you're going to get to on this journey is there with you you know in that nothingness in that ex living from yes. your true nature and um and so it's like I can understand because I've been there where the nothing the idea of nothing was scary but it's like everything you're looking for, no matter who you are, no matter what you're looking for, even if you're not a spiritual seeker, even if you're somebody who seeks material success, even if you're somebody who just seeks like romantic connection, even if you're just somebody who seeks happiness, like that's what everybody's looking for. Everybody's looking for that happiness and peace. And that's where it is. <laughs> yeah, it's here when we're not trying to find it. Mm hmm. And and then doing still happen. Mm -hmm. Even more yeah. so, it feels there is more energy of creativity, inspiration, because the judgment is dropped. So there is no more, oh, if I do this, will it work? That's yeah. dropped. So mm -hmm. there's doing, and then there's it's working. Yeah. But there's no <laughs> me doing it for this and that. Mm -hmm. it's it feels more like a an expression of our individual um uh -huh. uh, our individual expression bloom i could say like it's not gonna it's not gonna disappear the the person mm -hmm. is still allowed to be in a relationship and, and our mm -hmm. individual person personality 
is, yeah. is still evolving, evol evolving and growing while resting in our nature, which is not moving and evolving and never becoming. Yeah. So yeah. I think it, it's more an expanded experience. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's less contracted. Yes. And I think that's also a misconception that a lot of seekers have is that like, is that you're just going to become a monk who sits on a mountaintop and just yeah. kind of like no, no reaction. I mean, no, like, no, yeah. does, no, you know, not doing anything, just meditating all day, you know, whatever. I don't yeah, know what people think, yeah. but, yeah. <laughs> but, um, if you like doing that, that can be that, but it's not oh, yeah. necessarily yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you can still go through your day and enjoy the things that you know that that, that you enjoy and yeah and like I like to have my little cup of Turkish coffee and I just enjoy it I just enjoy my day and the things that unfold during the day for me um I still have like throughout the day I notice things things arise um mind stories and emotional stories and so there's still a like dissolving happening for me. Um, but like you said, it's like, it's like that expansion opens up more and it's like most of my day is peace. And then when those things arise, it's just kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just kind of like, the best way to just explain it is like a cloud in the sky you know it's, it's just kind of like oh yeah. okay yeah. it's there and the next thing you know it's gone and then it's like yeah, yeah. back to yeah. a sunny day <laughs> yeah 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 that's what would st stabilizing in that in our true nature is there's no more fear of losing it mm -hmm. so it's the and that seems to be what support less emotional turbulence because there is more and more so that's why we, when we hear the, the integration process, from one level, there is no integration. And that's yes. absolutely true because it's always this moment. We can only yes. exist in this moment. But from another level, there is a progression of, of dissolution, of uh, yeah. turbulence. I would be lying if I would say there is not because yeah. after David, my invitation where there was a lot of sadness my dad was sad my granddad mm -hmm. it's like a, um, a tendency in, yeah. in, in our um, human experience and this tendency was still there and I did uh, cried a lot mm -hmm. and I can I can see that if prior even to self-realization the sadness could be seen in the eyes all the time it was always lingering there yeah and, and then with self-realization it kind of just had to come out so there was a lot of tears there was not yeah. a lot of anger it yeah. felt like anger had dissolved before mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. self-realization it's weird how it happened there was like um I was an angry person for a big part of my life and that felt it dissolved for a few years and at some point what was there was more like I felt hopeless Mm -hmm. a lot of hopelessness how come I'm not happy mm -hmm. I have everything I have everything I'm not angry anymore mm -hmm. there was like a sense of hopelessness and distress that was getting bigger and bigger and that that yeah. was already um, the process of, as already, I had already started before there was that oh okay oh my God. thank god <laughs> Thank God, it's uh, well. I I felt like why has no one ever told me that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the body was seen later. I'm not the body. Oh, the body is 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 a beautiful instrument, but I am not it. I am not the body. And and that took a little bit more time to feel that the body is appearing in consciousness as as mm. along with all the other bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and it's held within that so, so it feels like the human experience becomes held within mm -hmm. a bigger spacious 
mm-hmm. loving this. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I was connected to that as a child, as a very mm-hmm. young child. So that was my, the realization was, oh, you know, this childlike magic of trust. Life yeah. is magical. And that's, uh, that's how it <laughs> feels now yeah. but with the wisdom of an adult and and all the question that people ask um about uh what if there is no person there's still there's still the life of the person we're speaking together as both mm-hmm. individual mm-hmm. but there is no personalization yeah of, of me i am doing life i am doing this i'm controlling it and that's that's yeah. release it feels like yeah yeah it's it's I love for me it's been like a I've always liked the analogy of a video game like a virtual reality video game because um yeah it just it feels yeah. like that's the most clear way of explaining it. it's like there's a character here and there's things that the character does and um but like just as if you were to play a video game it's like you know that you're not that character but you're here like just playing the game and this happens and maybe you, you you know there's adventures and yes. maybe you move on to a next level but it's like no more attachment because whatever happens to that character doesn't mean anything about you but like not only are you this character but you're also creating the game itself <laughs> yes and all the other characters that yes. are also made of your own yeah of it's- consciousness and um and anything we attribute to anyone it's just a concept there is no there is no more of that. I cannot hold the concept of Karina. All mm-hmm. I know is this moment, this mm-hmm. moment that is shared together. Everything else is an imagination. Of, yes. Because I'm not there. There is no, so there is no separation there. It's a realization that if I start to imagine these people are really, really happy and I'm not there, that's imagine. Mm-hmm. That's. Mm-hmm. And and at the same time, I always say it doesn't deny that there is suffering. It doesn't. It's not like a a negation of no, no one is suffering. There is suffering, mm-hmm. and and mostly because there is a mistaken identity that yeah we feel separate and we feel in fear of the other when we feel separate, or yeah. in, or the belief in lack that that mm-hmm. there is lack and that I need to gain to get more to accumulate mm-hmm. so that i am safe because there is mm-hmm. lack mm-hmm. that's another that's another belief life yeah. is abundant and, well, and, 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 and in a sense when for me in my direct experience with self-realization there is less need to accumulate so mm-hmm. there is more abundance also because of that there is yeah. i love traveling and i still do but i don't need to travel i don't i know that i I'm not traveling to be happy. Yeah. It's like an extra bonus that I I enjoy traveling, but I don't have to. So there is less need for material accumulation. And yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That that's um I that's why I I think of it less of like, like you said this is that's not what's going to make me happy because happiness is here but it's part of like creation and play that's what I I like to define it as play because like you can be happy and it's like oh I want to go I want to play over here and I want to play with this and like so it just becomes part of like play you're just like yes I I felt that with starting a podcast I thought oh I'd like to start a podcast Mm -hmm. what is the the application that I should use and then I bought the microphone <laughs> and I'm like I would never done I would never do that before because I'm yeah. <laughs> failing and and I just thought oh it's gonna be fun so it's like what what wants to play out what what would I like to play mm-hmm. with and, yeah and work becomes play and everything is just not serious yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know, there's this whole, I don't know if you've seen there's because AI is becoming more and more popular, the use of AI. And um, for me, I was, it's really exciting. And I really like it because I, I run a online business on, and I market on social media and I create content and it's, 
with spiritual and personal coaching and um AI is like I can do the things that feel like play I can do it I mean there's nothing you know if I have to do the other stuff it's not that big of a deal it's just stuff that gets done but AI allows me to just like really focus on what actually feels like play and what actually and to like the things that I that I usually don't like to do like creating terms and conditions and oh, you know formatting yeah. and things like that it's like just put it into the AI machine and <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <why> not? <laughs> it's been it's just funny because um because you know it's like it was like best I, I said like oh I manifested AI but it's not that it's not that I manifested AI it's just kind of like things unfolded in a way where it's like it's, I get I get to follow yeah. my play I get to follow things that feel good and other things end up working out for working out as well <laughs> yes 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 yeah it feels like a, a discovery and as as we're not met trying to maintain high vibration frequency mm -hmm. it's not, mm -hmm. like it's not from the mind that it seems like experience that match the vibration frequency enter our feed our our environment our physical mm -hmm. environment so things are aligned to the vibration frequency well that's, that's quite amazing yeah well i it's I don't know if it's the way it's taught or the way that it's understood, but the things like the law of attraction, which is, you know, like this is some, this is what I've been immersed in for the last 20 years. This is what my story was all about. Learn, trying to learn how to manifest, perfecting manifestation, manifestation, manifestation. And it's like, you realize that it's really backwards because it's not a matter of forcing yourself or trying to be high vibe because that's what that, that state, that highest vibration or whatever state is what you are naturally. Yeah. So it's actually takes, it's actually like that, that holding on to the story that, that causes the contraction that causes those like things that don't feel good, those things that lead to suffering. So we, we were taught, or at least I was taught and I taught other people that it's like, we got to do all these things. You got to raise your vibration. You got to work on your, you got to use your mind to get yourself high vibe, to get yourself feeling closest to the feelings of joy and love that you can possibly do. You have to do this, do this, do that, do that. And it's backwards. <laughs> yes. Yes. And funny enough, you know, this is sometimes what brings us to let go of the whole thing and say, oh, yeah, done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much effort. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I tell people like it takes more energy to hold on to the, it takes more energy to hold on to these like feelings that don't feel so great than it does to just release release and it's like you you relax into joy you relax into happiness you relax into peace it's not a force it's not a forcing no. or a doing it's yeah. a letting go into yes into it yes yes it, it's like um i often say that expansion is natural and contraction mm -hmm. is what's not natural so when it start to to expand things unravel yeah <laughs> Yeah, so they can unravel because we're not doing it. The expansion is just the doing is the contraction actually. Mm -hmm. But when there is the relaxation, it's uh, natural. It's our natural state that we're yes. reclaiming. And the more people speak about this, I feel the more it gets simpler for mm -hmm. anyone to realize and 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 do the work if there's a work to do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I knew I was really really tired of suffering and I thought mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather die than continue to live the way mm -hmm. I was living it was becoming really hard so uh, yeah. I I said tell me what to do and I'll do it and someone told me that you know welcome feel mm -hmm. the feeling welcome the feeling mm -hmm. and I just yeah. trusted that at some point yeah. yeah, it just I wanted this piece that I saw was available. I feel it's kind of you get like a, a free sample, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, okay, you got it, you want it? <laughs> yeah, do you really want it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, for I have the same thing. Um, I got to a point where it's just like I was, I was just numb. Okay, so I was so 
like in suffering I was so depressed so unhappy anxiety and I was numbing myself with like tv and alcohol and like oh yeah and I got to a point where it was just like same thing like I would rather die than keep doing this and so what what are my options options are keep do, living the way that I'm living not live anymore or um change <laughs> change something and so what I for me because I had been studying you know law of attraction manifestation for so long one thing I knew that I had proven to myself was that there was a correlation between when I would practice gratitude and how my life would reflect that gratitude right so I decided to do gratitude for 30 days straight just like focus on gratitude and so I, I did a gratitude practice for 30 days straight and I and I started feeling more and more naturally into that, like love and joy. And I completely transferred my life from doing this. Like my life went from here to like something completely different, but it's like what you're talking about. It was like this taste of like, I know, but again, I was doing, I was, I was yes. doing gratitude. I was yes. forcing myself to do gratitude. I was forcing my mind. I was forcing my energetic system and it worked like it changed my life. There was nothing wrong with it. But now looking back on it, it's like, it was hard to, um, it's hard to, it's not something you can continue to do. Like there has to be something that's more sustainable. And really what was happening is that, um, is that I was pulling myself out of the story and I was allowing gratitude, but I didn't see it that way. I was allowing love and gratitude and joy, oh, but instead yes. I was, had the story of like, I'm doing, I'm doing this. I'm yes. creating joy and love and peace, but you don't create joy and love and peace. You oh. allow it. Yes. Yes. Wow, when you were speaking, I was hearing the word that came was like the opening of the heart. Mm -hmm. It's in the it's part of it, I feel that there is an opening of the heart and yeah, a flow of, of energy and love. Yeah. That, that then transmute these these uh, low vibration yes. contraction fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um yeah. So yeah, life is allowing. It's not a search. It can be just an allowing of love and joy. Yeah. It's so beautiful. We're so, I'm so grateful. And I feel <laughs> blessed. <laughs> I feel blessed. Yeah. yeah. And today you do, because um, that, that's one thing I felt with the realization was, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> like to work as if you can't do anything anymore. Because yeah. everything is a lie, you know, if yeah. I tell people to do this, there's nothing to do and I'm telling you to do this. So at some point there was like, um, for me, there was a, a, um, a process of integrating that, that felt like a conflict at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I feel, no, it's like I found tools that, mm -hmm. and I'm so blessed to have found them that I now see nothing wrong with offering tools, mm -hmm. even if... Yeah. At the same time, I can tell someone you are already it. Yeah, yeah. But if you need a tool, I have a tool. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And the GP Walsh, I bring up a lot because he's somebody who was a key um, teacher for me. He's he's the first one that I came across who was like, that's that's a totally valid thing. It's like you're walking two paths, you're leading two paths. You're showing people and pointing to what their true nature is. So the whole story can drop away. But in the meantime, while they're stuck in the story, you have a tool that could help them ease, open the heart, yes. ease out of the story. And you're so you're doing both. Yes. And then um, the more that you dissolve, the more that you open up the heart, the more that you allow more love and peace and the more that you dissolve those stories, um, the I, I don't want to say the easier because it can happen anytime, but for some people that, that makes it easier to see who and what you truly are. Yes. For other people, the story is they had to go deep into suffering for this to open up. There's no one way. Yes. There's no one path. Exactly. But yeah. Everybody's yeah. path is unique and there's nothing wrong with using a tool while you're in the story to release the story and open up your heart. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. 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 It's a mix of the gradual path. Mm -hmm. and the direct path yes exactly and, uh, we seemingly bumped into the direct path <laughs> <laughs> yeah. deep suffering yeah 
Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and David was so pivotal in stabilizing with the teaching of the five kosha, which is, mm -hmm. oh my God, that was for me what stabilized this because at first there was an attachment to bliss. Mm -hmm. And I didn't believe that bliss was our true nature and that I should mm -hmm. be in bliss. Yeah. <laughs> and then showing that these are modes of experience and mm -hmm. the most available, easy um, of the sheet to find is the wisdom body. Yeah. And we all know effortless being. It's mm -hmm. so, so simple. Mm -hmm. and, and resting more and more in effortless being, there's possibility to reveal bliss. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and go and and then and then I learned with him that going into the mode of the mental mode and the dualistic mm -hmm. mind, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a mode. So I yes. can go in <laughs> and out, in and out, and at some point it becomes really seamless. There is no yeah. fear of going <laughs> the man and the mode mm -hmm. of the mental yeah. realm. And the mind is still really really useful to function. It's just mm -hmm. it's not used to judge. It's not believed. It's like I, I I said last week, it's like there is commenting, mm -hmm. but you can see that the commenter is not you. <laughs> and the comments really suck. Yeah. <laughs> and and when, when you believe the comment, you feel the emotion, and then you know you're in the emotional room, body, and you can mm -hmm. feel the feeling in the body, in the physical yeah. body. <laughs> just to attend to it <laughs> yeah that's so true or like you and if you're you know when you're in the when you're in the story and you see the commenter and you go oh my gosh that that's not you know you, you shouldn't be doing that and then there's guilt and shame and blame and then you think it's you and you think there's something wrong with you but yeah when you're approaching it from the observer it's just kind of like oh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened <laughs> um yeah the five it's interesting you brought up the koshas because david has talked to me about them many times and it's like at that point so because i've been a spirit i've been on a spiritual journey or whatever um all my life because i was raised with new age spirituality and so at that point when i when i met david i was at a point where i intellectually knew that everything was a story. I intellectually knew this. I knew that that this was an illusion. Everything's just a story on all levels, not just the physical world, but also like, you know, when we talk about like talking to angels and like um, ascended masters and stuff like that, like I knew all of it was a story. Again, this is intellectually. And um, and so when I spoke with David and he was talking about the koshas, I was very dismissive of it because I was like, oh, well, that's just another story too. Cause like yeah. everything's a story, everything's a story in my, and so, um, so I actually wasn't really, it was just one of those things that I took with a grain of salt and I didn't really pay too much attention to, but, um, I, a lot of the work that I do now and a lot of the stuff that helped me came from Lester Levingston, who, you know, was the person who teaches that welcoming tool as yes. well um and he talks about the five levels of consciousness five levels of like con of conscious awakening or consciousness and the fifth level being like being in your true nature and he talked about how like you can see your true nature but you can still be playing out on one of those other levels and that was really freeing for me because that was what yes. was happening to me it's like I saw my true nature but I was still playing out on um, one of those other levels. Well, I'm creating a whole class around that those levels because it helped me so much. I just recently realized that they're based on the kosha. Oh, great. <laughs> nice. So it came for nice. full circle. And I realized that like the koshas essentially did end up being really helpful in just yes. giving permission for, you know, yes. it, again, it's it wasn't about like, it was more giving permission, like, oh, okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a yeah. Uh, yeah. We're we're here to experience, so we're going yeah. on rides, and then we're getting on them and off them, and yeah, yeah. There's nothing and... wrong with any of it, and 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 the um, the kosha. I feel is like I I see them more as ingredients. Mm -hmm. You know, you have these ingredients. 
Mm -hmm. they're available to you because you yeah. are an infinite being you are infinite yeah. consciousness. you can play with these ingredients consciously exactly so I, I, mm -hmm. it was supportive in the it, it's for the mind to relax to 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 um to get some kind of model if mm -hmm. some people they have different kind of process but here the mind is really thorough in the mm -hmm. detail and needs on mm -hmm. like clear clarity and that that was supportive for the relaxation of the mind and understanding yeah. seeing how okay i'm operating from that mm -hmm. body sheet right now and it's fine mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with it. i have yeah. them available because the conflict sometimes with, when people realize their true nature is this or that yes mm -hmm. and now no 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 it's all Mm -hmm. you have yes. access to all we are all of it and nothing at the same time we are not yeah. in all and we have access to all of it yes and that was the that was the inner battle that was happening for me it was this or this it was this or this how can I be you know in that place where they merge that both but there is no such thing as being this or this or that place where they merge there is only like you said all of it and with the levels that I was talking about it was like a lot of people see it as this this like level that you have to get to uh -huh. but, with the, but looking at it from the koshas like you were saying it's like no there's not a level you get to you're always here you're always at the end you're always at yes. level five the final place and and I love David did a YouTube video about this he's like you never stop being yeah the infinite being you're just it's like looking through these other levels it's not like you move from it's not like you move from you one kosha become... to the other kosha. You yeah. are the infinite being kind of viewing <laughs> yes. through all these thing. other, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we never become anything. No. <laughs> being is just being. It never becomes. And there is no becoming, becoming happy. Mm -hmm. becoming. We are already being. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful mm -hmm. That's uh, sometimes why the people call it a shift, but even a shift is kind of, a, it's not really true. It's a revealing. It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. it, when we don't realize this, that's where we're shifted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. there's kind of a return to, oh, okay, this mm -hmm. is the proper order. Or it's, I'm not the person trying to become yeah i'm already yeah. being and i experience yeah. being a person through yeah the access to the mind and the body exactly and that's it just goes back to you know it's just so the way that was been taught the way that i had it in my mind in the past is just so backwards it's so backwards because it's like there's something to achieve there's somewhere to get there's someone to become there's something you have to do and it's like exactly it's it's a releasing of the illusion is the releasing of all these of every it's the releasing it's releasing back into seeing what you are versus achieving something yes yes and and one of the things that may be helpful for anyone listening is that mind will grade experience mm -hmm. it will say like this is better if i was there <laughs> that could be better when that is seen through all experience is just the same so it's mm -hmm. a vibration it's an experiencing of a vibration mm -hmm. there is either mm -hmm. like the low vibration if i am in fear or sad mm -hmm. or another kind of vibration but nothing is caused it's not mm -hmm. caused by the outside mm -hmm. it's not caused by i have a partner now i am happy it's not caused yeah. by that. it's on cause yeah yeah and on top of that i would just add that um that if you know if it arises where you're making a story about it or if it arises where it's like this is happening and and it feels bad or it looks bad and you're labeling it you get to witness that too and release that too like there's nothing wrong if those the stories or at least for me those stories yes. did come up and because i wasn't seeing it as all the same or because i wasn't seeing yes. it as all then I, I, then on top of that, I was creating guilt because I were like, you know, I'm not really there. I don't know what yes. I'm talking about. So, so if those feelings of like, where you, or those thoughts where you start labeling something bad or those feelings where it's like, you're judging, notice the judgment 
the judgment, you know, it's just another story. Notice it. It's not bad that it's coming up. It doesn't mean that you haven't seen your true nature. It just, it's just, it's just a thought coming up. It's just a feeling coming up and notice yes. it. Yeah. 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 At first it's uh, done so quickly that we adopt the thought. <laughs> and, at, and then at some point it's kind of plays out in slow motion. <laughs> But I do, I I mean, uh, it's not so long ago that I didn't catch it and I was mm -hmm. already adopting it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's normal too, because it's, the game is meant to be looking real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it was too easy. Yeah. It, it, it's meant to really bring us into this ride yeah and it's not there's nothing wrong with the game it's the game that we play it's the game mm -hmm. it's it's sad that we've mistaken our identity so that there is so much suffering so there could be a lot less suffering and yeah. the, game, the game would be more enjoyable for mm -hmm. everyone yeah but but there's there's nothing wrong like you're saying if we adopt a thought and we feel the emotion nothing has gone wrong we just went into mm -hmm. it and, yeah. then, and then as we step back, we see, oh, nothing has happened. My yeah. being is on change. <laughs> oh, the being is on change. Mm -hmm. I'm still mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Nothing has gone wrong. And that that seems that it, it is what's unraveling, unraveling yeah. and dissolving. And I think that's so important to talk about. And that's so important to mention is because um, I know that while I was going through that process, if I had had more people that I could see talk about this, it would have helped me realize that, oh no, this is just a story. And I had seen my true nature, but because I was seeing just this one perspective being shared, um, it was like, it, it, it almost like added proof to that story of like, oh, you haven't seen your true nature because you're feeling these things, because you're making judgments, because you still feel that there's good events and bad events. You're not seeing it across, like it, as, as, um, I don't want to say neutrality, but, you know, as, as the same, um, because yeah. of that, that fed the story of like, oh, it didn't happen. You didn't actually yeah. see it through nature. You don't know. You don't, you don't know. And so, um, especially reading some of Lester Levingston's work, it's like, you can see your true nature and they can still have stories come up. You can see your true nature and you can still have the, the you know, emotions arise in the emotional body you can see like, like it doesn't negate each other because it's not like like we talked about many times already today yes. it's yes. not like you 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 have self-realization and all of a sudden you're changed and you have no emotions and you're perfect and life just unfolds perfectly that's not yeah it's it like for me. <laughs> yeah and most i think it's common that it takes yeah to 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 drop in the body it's kind of we mm -hmm. have this beam of light and then it goes down in the body and mm -hmm. it takes some time to bring it here because we mm -hmm. want to be happy in our human life in our mm -hmm. yeah in our experience to bring it yeah. here in our experience yeah and at the same time that's just a story too our stories yeah. are just stories yeah. and i do believe that there are people who saw their true nature and it just like yeah. the rest fell away um that can be a story too that can be an event too I know that Eckhart Tolle talks about his story and for him it was just so deep in suffering that 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 the, the, the whole story of an individual dropped away and yeah. he was just yeah. si sitting according to his, to him he was just sitting on a park bench at Wind Bliss yeah. <laughs> and without without you know and everybody's like why are you so happy <laughs> like he, so so I mean it's all just stories that there's no one that's it's not gonna happen the way it happened for me it's not gonna happen the way that it happened for no. you it's not gonna it's gonna happen however it no, happens for you yeah. and you just watch it and let let it unfold it doesn't mean anything it's not it doesn't it doesn't mean that you haven't seen it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything and it doesn't change anything yeah yeah like you said we're already whole we're already that we're already perfect it doesn't yeah. when you yeah <laughs> if you go back in the story it doesn't mean anything <laughs> yeah even the bliss I, I I felt like probably there was a lot of bliss that was felt in in this body here because mm -hmm. there was a lot of suffering 
Mm. But the, the relief was so mm -hmm. huge. It, it came like sudden. I never searched for non duality I didn't know what it was. I just yeah. bumped into, I was looking for wellness. I never yeah. did any, even any self-improvement or mm -hmm. these kind of things. So I just, I thought I can't do this anymore. I found the greatest secret. <laughs> and then it clicked when I heard it and the relief mm -hmm. was huge, probably because the suffering was so intense. It yeah. became so contracted, it had to kind of explode. Yeah. And when it did, there was this bliss that lasted for around six weeks. Yeah. And when that, the, the mind came back to question and I adopted <laughs> the thought, it felt awful. But it's, yeah. all, it's all normal. It came. And then yeah. there is more fluidity, the bliss bodies. Yeah. It's okay to, it's, there's no grasping for, yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah, that that seems to be a pretty common story that I hear of like, and I again, I had the similar experience where it's like, yeah, you there's this moment of bliss opening up bliss and peace. And for some people, it's, it's weeks, some people, it's months, for some people, it's, a co it's years. And then all of a sudden, like the human experience starts playing out again. And I get and yeah, it's like, but how do I get back to that? <laughs> so that's pretty common. I've heard that a lot from a lot yeah. of people. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, the people that I've talked to that haven't had that, who are just kind of like, they saw their true nature and that was that. And yeah. it was like, end of story. Yeah. I also feel like there was already mm -hmm. okay. a dropping away before that happened for them. Um, because they were already like in these kind of either studying these philosophies or religion or in these religions or these practices that the mate where where they talk about this already so they're already like practicing they're already letting yes. go of the illusion layers mm -hmm. of the illusion so when they see their true nature it's just kind of like a final dropping away and that's that yeah so yeah. neither so it's not like everyone had like I said not everyone experiences the way that I did no. or the way that you did no. and not but not everyone experiences it that way either the way that these some of these teachers talk about it yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I feel like I think David Bingham told me he didn't feel any fear, but he was mm -hmm. meditating a lot. He had a lot of practice. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'd had an interview with um somebody, um, Judith Newman is her name, and I interviewed her on my podcast, and she said she was one of the first people to say like there's still a balancing that that you know there's still a there's still a balancing and a letting go that happens and she was using the chakras as her reference but still there's this balancing of like the heart and the and that was another huge thing it's like oh okay because we do hear these people who it's like they see their true nature and that's it like there's no like if you if you there's there's nothing more to be done and to hear like okay well for some people, there's still this balancing that happens, but, and it's not that you do it, it's that you allow it to unfold. <laughs> um, you allow it to dissolve away. Um, again, it's like, it's the importance of this part is that the mind for me use this, use this idea, this belief that it had to all drop away to tell me that it hadn't happened. Yeah. And then that created unnecessary suffering yeah. because then I was searching for something I already knew. And, and because I was searching for something I already knew, like there's not, yeah. I was searching for something else and there is nothing else. So there was yes. nothing to find. So it was just yes. constant searching. Yes. And so, and so it created this unnecessary suffering. Had I known that had I seen and and David David was already talking about this I just didn't receive it the way that I can receive it now but I didn't know that like for some people there still is stories and there still is emotional turbulence and there still is you know all these things that can come up and it doesn't mean that you didn't see your true nature it doesn't mean no, that probably coming up because of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> more and more because there is yeah. uh, well i don't want to say like any generalization of anything but it feels like i had to deal with this consciously mm -hmm. yes what mm -hmm. about that 
what about that and i had to mm -hmm. deal with this like consciously dealing with mm -hmm. it one thing that played out for me was i i realized okay it's all a story <laughs> and then i i felt my partner is in his story <laughs> but i didn't see that that was my story yeah <laughs> so yeah it's so easy to project on others oh they are in their story and that well mm -hmm. story is that <laughs> Mm -hmm. it took a yeah. while like to just see oh well that's not his story yeah, yeah that's my that. story that he is in his story <laughs> can, yeah. I, can I drop that too <laughs> yeah 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 the way that I the way that I look at it from you know just to try to describe it from a conceptual place is that like awareness is like this light that we shine that's like it's it's like when you're approaching it from awareness, you see everything so clearly. And so all this stuff that's been under the surface, all this stuff that hasn't been looked at is coming into this light of awareness. And, and so before you're like in the story and all the stuff's in the dark and you're just narrowed in on this. And then yeah. you go back into, and then the light of awareness starts shining on all this stuff and all this stuff comes up. And I don't know, I use the word ego just because everybody can understand ego, but it's just a word. Um, I use the word ego. It's like, pieces of your ego start being revealed pieces where you believed in separation pieces where you have judgment and you just they're going to come up and they're going to continue to come up to be let go to be to be basically what it is is to be dissolved by seeing it as the illusion that it is by seeing it as not real by by seeing it from the place of awareness and the same thing happened to me it's like there was a judgment that arose of like oh but you don't really know the truth I know the truth and you don't know <laughs> so it's projecting like the same thing like they're in the they're stuck in the story and he, yes. I'm here who doesn't see this I, same thing but that's just more story that's just more yeah. illusion and it's like allowing it to come up without judgment again it doesn't mean like yes. if I think like oh that means I'm a bad person that means I'm I'm like not spiritual enough then that's that's the belief again in that yeah. I'm a I'm an individual human separate from all this which is not true I I get to observe that the story is playing out. I get to observe that these feelings and thoughts are arising without judgment. And that's when you can let them go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that totally happened as well. And I, and then, but, but I didn't know that then. And so then yeah. when that happened again, it was like, oh, well, you must not be, you must not have seen your true nature because somebody who saw their true nature wouldn't be judging other people like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Those can come up too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like um, I love the word that the, these energy they come to be to say goodbye, mm -hmm. and they I need to be acknowledged. They never were acknowledged. It's possible that these energy they were lingering around the body for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In in my human experience, because this revealing of our true nature is knowing there is no past there is no future there is only this mm -hmm. moment and, and mm -hmm. at the same time mm -hmm. there's a possibility to know well as a little kid the story of me there was these emotions that were never seen I was lonely and scared mm -hmm. and that was never acknowledged by my caretaker as in the mm -hmm. story of Julie so yeah. there was this lonely and scared energy that needed to be just embrace like it can yeah. finally as as we access the presence that is already what we mm -hmm. are this yeah. presence makes it possible for these energy to arise otherwise it's kind of the mechanism of pushing them away is kind of a way to, to stay safe because mm -hmm. when i believe i'm a separate individual and i have all these problem and I, I can't allow myself to fall apart and this it's going to be dangerous if I start to feel all of that and, yeah and then with that that presence of awareness this open lens where oh it's okay nothing is happening to my being I'm still here mm -hmm. nothing is changing awareness mm -hmm. never change mm -hmm. yeah never goes away never changes these energy they have a space to just say okay I, I'm, I'm here okay and and then as they and are that's, that's they leave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly I was going to say that's when that's when they dissolve <laughs> yeah I uh, used to do this thing um you know when I was really heavily into like 
spiritual experiences and spiritual like powers, you know, like, <laughs> like I, um, I used to do this thing where it's like, I would, it's like, it's called cloud bursting. So you would like, look at a cloud and then like, you know, erase it, like dissolve it from you, from the experience. But <laughs> so, you know, it's like when I was really heavily on my spiritual journey. So it's like things like, you know, using psychic powers, telepathic powers, you know, all that stuff was really like powers. All That, that was my story for a little while. And so I, I was like, okay, I'm going to like dissolve these clouds. But the truth is, is like, when you just, just, when you just look at a cloud, it's going to dissolve because the very nature of a cloud is it forms and it dissolves, it forms and it dissolves. Yeah. And it's like, I liken, so now when I think about what you're talking about, that's how I see it. I, I'm reminded when I used to like try to erase clouds, but really just being aware of the feeling, being aware of these things, that in itself allows, it's like a cloud. It just like starts to dissipate. Next thing you know, it's not there anymore. Just by looking at it, there's nothing you have to do. Um, it's mm -hmm. like you see it for what it is, that it's not a solid real thing, that it was just like smoke it's not you it's not, no, it's not you, you. <laughs> yeah yeah well thank you i think we did a pretty good uh around the block <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm glad we could speak about that and i hope it helps yeah. people so i we'll really yeah i really hope it does because um because i know it would have helped me had i heard more conversations like this um it's 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 a normal like it may not be everybody's process but it's normal it's more normal than than is talked about and um yeah if you saw your true nature you saw your true nature <laughs> yes yeah yeah it's such a grace mm -hmm. such a grace and blessing so you um we will probably put this conversation on our media somewhere yeah. mm -hmm. and you do have a facebook page yes so it's just my name karina levon um i'll i guess we'll link each other stuff wherever we put it yeah yes. you can find me on facebook karina levon i have a tiktok karina levon and then my instagram karina levon oh cool i just started a tiktok i never had one and i just started <laughs> <laughs> it's Fun. it's different but it's it's kind of cool once you get the hang of it <laughs> yes yeah uh, all right so um i do have a youtube channel so it's probably there that this going to appear okay. and we perfect. both we both work with people if anyone yes. needs anything for this kind of work question yeah. even i do have a simple conversation also with question yeah and answer and it's uh seems to provide uh, people seem to find what they need yeah yeah I think you also you have a new class about the koshas that are that you put out as well yes yes yeah. oh and I want to end with and I'm sure you're going to be so like in alignment with that to follow intuition the wisdom mm -hmm. body is intuition and this is each our discovery was led by intuition oh yes yes don't <laughs> really trust intuition if something feels right yeah. even if the mind says it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. if it feels right yeah, yeah there's a come someone asked me how to discern between intuition and i would be interested to know your thought about that what i i answered was there's a feeling of openness mm -hmm. that feels right Mm -hmm. it's not yeah. a trying a need or wanting mm -hmm. how would you describe this uh, feeling for intuition yeah um so this has been a theme of our whole conversation today is this idea of expansion and contraction what i say is follow those expansive feelings like you're talking about it's a feeling of opening up it's a feeling of expansive it's before the mind comes in and makes a story it's like that initial feeling it comes before the mind and it's either going to feel like a like a um like a contraction like a tightness or it's going to feel like an opening up and you follow that opening up you follow that expansion and anything that feels like a tightening is coming from 
um, a mind story or, or emotional body. And um, that's what gets to be let go. So I have this whole saying, it's like, it's follow your expansion, alchemize your contraction and leave the rest be. Uh-huh. And so the following your expansion is, was what you're being divinely led to because, you know, um, because our natural state is, is expansion. And then anything that's contraction is coming from stories and that's, and to transmute it, there's, you know, you can, if you're at a place where if you find tools helpful, you can use tools or you can just bring it to your awareness that it's just a story and allow it to dissolve. And then leave the rest be is just about, you don't, you, you're not doing just to do because you think that doing is going to get you somewhere. That just, that's just yes. pointless. <laughs> yeah. That's just pointless doing. And that's what leads people to be tired and burnt out and, and all of that. So yeah. um, another thing I'd like to add to that idea of intuition is that intuition is a solid inner knowing. Um, and the difference is, is that like when it's something that's coming from the mind, there's going to be an emotional charge attached to it. When it's intuition, there it's it's separate from that emotional charge. Uh-huh. So sometimes you get this kind of like maybe your intuition is telling you like no, don't go there, but it's not going to be an emotional charge. It's going to be a very solid, stable no. Mm-hmm. Whereas if there's if there's like oh emotional charge, it's because there's something there's a mind story. That's when it's coming from the mind. Uh huh. Yes. And and funny enough, I had the, in retrospect in the storyline of event. I had an um, um, instance where I would feel an intuition to do mm-hmm. to go to do something or mm-hmm. maybe take a course or something. Mm-hmm. And the story would be, oh, this is because of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the, and then taking the class was perfect, but it was yeah. revealed after that it was not mm-hmm. because of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) That happens all the time. And you just have to trust those intuitive nudges because whether it, even if it doesn't give you what you thought it would give you, it's, it's something, it might just be the step on the road to the next thing. Yes. Um, Yes. And another thing, another layer is that, that I want to make sure people understand is that what, what will happen sometimes, especially, you know, if you don't know why, something you're being led to something or if it's like something that's outside of maybe your comfort zone what will happen is you'll get that expansive feeling and then the mind will come in and and tell stories whatever the story is and then fear will come in Mm -hmm. and then then it'll become contracted so people think like oh okay well that's a no because it feels scary Uh but always trust the initial thing because what will happen is you'll feel expansive and then it will then there'll be a secondary Uh feeling of contraction and that's just because the mind is, you know, trying to protect you from leaving your comfort zone or, yes. you know, whatever stories like the mind protects us from all kinds of things that we wouldn't, that we wouldn't think it would try to protect us from. It protects us from gaining more wealth. It protects us from, you know, because there's a story in there that believes that you're not safe, but it's just a story and it's not true. So yeah. you have to trust that initial feeling. And then if fear arises, know that it's just a story and move anyway, move with that expansion anyway. Yes. Oh, and I'd like to end with I yeah. heard a, a conference lately. Mm-hmm. Oh, Elizabeth Gilbert. You must know. Her. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. She wrote the magic, um, big magic. Uh-huh. I went for a conference and I love how she mentioned living from curiosity. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I love that word. That that feels so expensive uh, to yeah. just live from curiosity with curiosity. Yes. And curiosity yes. is closer to our true nature. Our true nature is innocent and cur- curiosity mm-hmm. is of that mm-hmm. uh, vibration frequency. Yes. And the mind is repetitive and uh, closed and mm-hmm. it's always a re- recycling the same kind of thing. It's always going to be like this. It was always like that. All of yeah. this repetition is uh is more of the mind and the curiosity you're already accessing the wisdom body yes let's yes. be curious how without yes. fear and the moment to moment living moment to moment with curiosity is the gift of, of that yes mm-hmm. 
I 100 I've I haven't read that book of hers I've only read you know eat pray love <laughs> yeah yeah eat pray love yeah I didn't read the big magic either I just went with the conference when she mentioned yeah. that I yeah, I, I resonate a lot with the curiosity living. Yeah, I I love that. I tell people that, you know, people who are learning, um, who are at the stage where they're learning that that reality gets created through them, um, there becomes a, a almost a desire, or like a desire to blame themselves of like, oh, how did I manifest this? How did I create this? And it's like, but that's not, that's not actually what's happening. So I, I tell them all the time, like, just get curious. What's really going on here? I love that question. What's really going on here? <laughs> Not did I, what did I do? How did I create this? Why yeah. is this bad thing happening? What's really going on here? Yeah. What story is really playing out here? Like, you know, just yes, me I love that. from curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, thank you. I'm going to end the recording. I think okay. it's just <laughs> lovely ending with intuition for, for anyone yeah. to feel into their intuition to yes. guide them and lead them back home. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. This has been so lovely. Yes, it's a pleasure. I'm glad we could meet. Yes. Bye, Karina.